Right. Looks like I'm live. If you see that the video starts buffering or something, um, the problem I've been having is that the computer will kind of freeze for about 60 to 90 seconds. So if that's happening a lot, we might have to stop this, but so far so good. This is Twinkie. So cool. Go ahead and bring us here. I have a couple different screens. Um, this one where I can do painting. This one where we can do sketching. And then one where you see my giant head and my dog. So feel free to start asking questions if you have them. Um, and to, uh, for these videos, I have to have a ton of different windows open. So if I have to click around and it takes me a minute to see if you say something, sorry. Um, Five different windows open right now. Six if you include my email. Hello. I see there are two of you watching. Ask me questions if you have them. been having a good day.
Twinkie is a very special dog. I'm on a bed covered in dogs right now. Good lord, Red. Sorry, Red's my horse. He weighs about 110, 115 pounds. So when he jumps off the bed, it sounds like the world's coming to an end. Oh my gosh, your breath is terrible, Twinkie. There's my carbon here. Um, you'd have trouble naming some of these. You could name the cyclic one and the one that's a Fisher projection. The one on top, you haven't learned how to name something that has a carboxylic acid and an alcohol on it, though. Let's see, I'm trying to do this in my head without writing anything down. Uh, 
car, I believe. If you flip the oxygen and flooring, that would put number one where it needs to be. Two. Actually, it should be S, shouldn't it? It's hard to do in my head without writing anything down. And then let's see, fluorine, oxygen. Basically what I'm doing is going through my head and doing the priorities. Um, so one flip, two flips, three flips. So those would both be S, I believe. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that. If you did want to name this one, Brittany, the uh, carbon right there with the ketone on it would be assigned number one. Alright, usually you'll just have to email me with, if you have them. Trying to make this fit. Yeah, so fluorine has a higher atomic weight than oxygen, right? So fluorine has to come before oxygen.
can I go over torsional, steric, and ring strain? Well, those are really kind of just definitions, and they're in the book. Um, so torsional strain's not super well understood. Sorry, I have to readjust here. Torsional strain's not really well understood. Um, but it seems to have something to do with orbital overlap. So, and, and like Van der Waals interaction, sort of, kind of going into it. So if something is eclipsing, you would expect it to have torsional strain, even if things aren't really bumping into each other. Steric strain is if you have things that are bumping into each other, like we talked about with like one three diaxial interactions. And then ring strain is just the strain created from having non-ideal bond angles that happen when you have rings. So. If you have something that's tetrahedral, you would expect 109.5 approximate degree angles. And in some rings, like if you imagine a cyclopentane or um, think like a cyclobutane where everything is at 90 degree angles, that's not going to be very stable. So, drawing, hi Bridget, uh, one bromo, two isopropyl cyclopentane. Okay. See you guys. Cyclopentane. One bromo. Two isopropyl. There you go. Other questions? Hi hey Marvin. Crystal who? Cross Crystal Wallenius? It's not like a crystal I can think of off the top of my head, but I've had several. Uh, yeah, Bridget, you just kind of have to memorize those. Like, Chert Butyl, all of those, they're just kind of memorized. Um, and I hate memorizing, but they're just kind of the way. Well, hi Marvin. Hi Crystal. Okay, so Brittany, um, can you be more specific about what you're having trouble with with a meso compound? Um, we covered them twice in class, and I've had a few people ask questions about them, but nobody's been able to really articulate what they're having trouble with, which means to explain it, I would explain it pretty much exactly the same way I did in class, which is in your notes. So I could use a little bit of... Um, guidance on what part of that you don't understand. So fill in the blank like what I don't understand about meso compounds is <laughs> and then I can cover that. I guess I can give you guys like a definition if that's what you want. Which, I mean, I've said them in class, but I probably didn't write it like this on the board, but a meso compound has. Oh, I'm putting this in quotes. I'm not quoting myself. It's 
So a meso compound has a plane of symmetry. Check. It has more than one chiral carbon, but because of the symmetry, the molecule is achiral. So usually what you're looking for is something that you would think um, so something that has two stereo centers, so like um, something that's R and S, and then an SR, but the molecule's symmetric on both sides, like you could have named it either direction because it's the same exact thing. Those are going to, that, that will be a meso compound. It's not actually two compounds. And because it's the same, it's not chiral. Um, a racemic mixture is just when you have the R and the S forms put together. So if you have, I mean, and that doesn't matter if you have any enantiomer. If you have the R form mixed with the S form together, you would call that a racemic mixture. Hey, Brandon. Can you make me some tea? Sunshine blend? The sunshine blend. I get tea. It's been running for the past few hours, so if it starts snotting or something, I'm sorry. Yeah, so like if, um, on that note, Brittany, like let's say I have something like this. Alright, so... I already, as it is right now, have one chiral carbon on there. Let's put on another. So what I just drew, the first one here has R stereochemistry, and this one also has R stereochemistry. So the enantiomer of that would be SS. Those are two different molecules. Now, what happens if I do this instead, oops, where I flip two groups. So now this has our stereochemistry and that would be S. Well, if I flip that molecule 180 degrees, because it's the same thing on either side, it would now be SRRS. So that's a meso compound. So you're really looking for something that has the same groups on either side. Um, you would look at that and say, yep, that's chiral. You know, you put your little chiral stars on there. But if you put it in a plane of polarized light, it wouldn't rotate because of internal symmetry. Hi, Marvin. So for R and S naming, so you're talking about the Connie and Gold Prelog rules. So the answer is, is sort of. So let's say I have a carbon and it has four different groups on it. Okay. One of those groups is a hydrogen. One of those groups is a CH3 group. Right. One of those is a CCH2 group. Okay. And one of those is a C triple bond, CH. Which of those have the highest priority is essentially what you're asking me. Well, so this one here, the way that the, the rules work, and these are completely arbitrary rules that were made up by someone at some point, actually three someones at some point. But so it's basically saying that carbon is attached to three carbons because it has a triple bond. The one that's bound to two, or that has the double bond, this one here, has a carbon bound to a hydrogen, but then two carbons. And then the one right here just has the three hydrogens on it. So when you look at that, that would mean 
this one here would have the first priority. And then this one here oops, would have second priority. The methyl would be third. And then the hydrogen would be number four. You don't have to have a hydrogen, right? I mean, you can have a molecule that's a quaternary carbon that's asymmetric and chiral that doesn't have a hydrogen on it at all. But a lot of molecules will have at least one hydrogen on them. So hopefully that makes sense. If I do another example, one that um, I see a lot of people have trouble with. So yeah, so if I have, let's say an aldehyde And let's compare that to a carboxylic acid. So which of those would have priority over the other? Well, this part is exactly the same, right? So then you have to look at the next difference, right? So in this case, it's a hydrogen. In this case, it's an oxygen, which means this would have priority over that one because of the oxygen. Now, Let's complicate things. Let's put on a, let's do it this way. Let's try something like this. Do an alcohol. So this one right here is essentially a carbon bound to two oxygens and a hydrogen. This one here is a carbon bound to essentially three oxygens. And then this one down here is a carbon bound to two hydrogens and an oxygen. Well, the carbons are all the same, so we don't look at those. We have to look at the next groups down. So in this case, um, the one that has, so like all of them have an oxygen. So this is, this is another way to kind of go about doing this problem. So then you have to look for the next highest groups, right? So this one has one oxygen, this one has two oxygens, and this one's got two hydrogens. So um, this would be number one extra bonds to that same type of atom. And that was just because they had to come up with a way to, to identify that, you know. So that was the rule that they came up with all those years ago. Let me give you guys one to work on. called a cyano group, a C triple bond to a nitrogen. Hi Lauren, I can draw that, can you? It would just be the RS isomer. Well, the RS compound, because then the SR is the one that would flip and be the same. So what I have here is a molecule. There are technically two chiral carbons here. There's one there and there's one there. I did not give you any stereochemistry for those. I just wanted you to think of the priority rules for that. As in which one has priority over the others.
So let's see. Or and that one would be R, right? And that one would be S, so that would be the meso compound. Thank you, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So if I'm looking at this carbon here, the nitrogen would have highest priority followed by the big mess of stuff over on that side, and then the carbon, and then there's a hydrogen there that's not shown that would be number four. If I look at the one right here, let me switch my color to something different, okay, then the highest priority group would be the nitrogen. Okay. The next highest priority group would be the carbon here attached to three nitrogens, essentially. It's not attached to three different nitrogens, that's just the way the rule works. Followed by the carbon attached to one nitrogen. Followed by the carbon attached to only other hydrogens and carbons. So there's an example of a chiral carbon that doesn't have any hydrogens on it, and the lowest priority group is actually a long carbon chain. Leafers all over the house worse than any dog I've ever seen. Woo! We got tea. Thanks, honey. Say hi to my class. Hello. They're being quiet tonight. That means they got they all understand everything, I'm sure. Draw a Newman projection for 1,4-dimethyl cyclohexane. I can draw a Newman projection for that, but there would be several because it depends on the stereochemistry of the 1,4-dimethyl groups. Kaylee, did you have a specific stereochemistry you were interested in? I just arbitrarily picked two. Um, like with all Newman projections, you kind of need to know where things are oriented or otherwise they're not really very useful. So in this case, I'll do the trans uh, diastereomer. And then like with other ones that we've done, you have to kind of pick which ones you're looking down. So if we look down those two, oh, that is a bad circle. Yeah, Bridget, I, there's nothing I can do to help you with that one. <laughs> if you can't memorize it, um, there's not much I can do for you on that. Okay, so this carbon here in yellow 
is this carbon right there on the mole mo molecule. If I can talk. So I have this methyl group on it and it's pointing up. So I put it pointing up. There's a hydrogen on it pointing down. The carbon behind it has two hydrogens right here that are pointing down. Or um, that are pointing one up and one down. And then let's do this one here and there. So this is our blue one. And that one has two hydrogens on it, right? So I'll draw those. And then the one behind it has a CH3 group pointing up. So I'll put it on the bond that's pointing up. The one that's pointing down will get a hydrogen on it. Does that make sense? Kaylee? This tea is excellent, thank you. It's called Sunshine Blend, but it doesn't have any caffeine in it, which is kind of strange. Usually morning blends of stuff are highly caffeinated. Now, Kaylee, if you want to see how to flip that, you would basically just have to draw the kind of opposite looking Newman projection. So it would be one like this. Where, right, when you flipped, when you flipped them, the one that points up is now pointing down, right? And the one that was pointing down is now pointing up. So you can also show these as flipped chair conformations. In this case, you still have the CH3 pointing up, right? The CH3 is the same as that CH3. It's just one is equatorial and one's axial. Same as we've seen before with other such problems. And then on the back, or on the right side, I should say. I still have my CH3, which is the same as this one, right? But now instead of being axial, this one's equatorial, because that's what happens when you flip the chair. But notice they're both still pointing up. One of the most important things to remember about those chair forms is you're not changing whether or not something's pointing up or down. You're only changing whether or not it's flipping the chair. If you're changing whether something's pointing up or down, you're changing the actual stereochemistry, not the conformational adjustment of that. too many dogs, I'm not sure. The carbon's in an alkyne? You? <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't make you memorize stuff. Right. It's sp hybridized, but what is the geometry? What's the, well, what's the bond angle? Yep. It's straight because it's 180 degree bond angles. Your book also covers that. Hey, Onyx. You can also get a lot of ring strain just as kind of a similar topic. If you're talking about alkenes, right, those have 120 degree bond angles. Oh, hi. You coming to join me? So it depends on the, the ring, right? But like, let's say you had a cyclopen, uh, propane, and you tried to put a ring in it, that or a bond in it. Oh, it's like candy corn. You tried to put a, a double bond in it 
it's going to have a very large amount of ring strain because it's not adopting that 120 degree angle that it wants to get. Come on. Come here. Oh, okay. You will only come up on my side. Oh my gosh, you're gonna hurt yourself. There you go. My elderly dog wanted to join me. She coughs a lot. That's not sure why. She's just real old. I don't you want to say hi to the review section on what? There could be. 100% of the material in class is fair game for the exam. Yes, Dennis, I covered meso compounds already in the first five minutes. <laughs> so you'll just get to go rewatch that. And I hope that, let me make sure, uh, did that answer make sense to you? And guys, also, if you're having trouble with the meso compounds, read the section in your book on it as well. You know, don't just use my words. What are you talking about? The Con Ingold Prey Law rules? You're not sure how to number. I'm not sure I know exactly what you're asking me. So if you. If you have a molecule. Oops. Oh, for the love of God, just find a place to sit down. Thank you. So let's say that's a hydrogen. I mean, it doesn't matter how many chiral carbons there are, it's all the same thing. And you have to use the same Conningold Prelog rules that we used for the other um, stereochemistry. So let's say I have an iodine and a CH3, a hydrogen and an oxygen, a hydrogen, a chlorine and a CH3. Okay, so I'll just start off with this one on top right here. What does that carbon have on it? It's essentially a hydrogen, a CH3 group, an iodine, and a CHOH attached to other stuff, dot dot dot. So you follow this Conningold prey log rule. So the highest priority group is the one with the highest atomic weight, which would be iodine. The hydrogen would obviously be number four because it has the lowest atomic weight of anything. And then in this case, the carbons basically cancel each other out. So you have to look for the next highest group, which would be an oxygen. So that means this would be number two. That would be number three. Well, okay. What do I have to do to this to make it fit that one, two, three, four standard that we've been using? Um, the only ones that are out of order are two and four, and if I flip those,
then I get the R standard, which means one flip is an odd number, which means this one on top has S stereochemistry. Okay, now Here. There we go. So now let's look at the second one here. I'll, I'll do that one. Um, that one. So that one has a carbon. I'll just do it over here. A carbon bound to a carbon and an iodine. One bound to an oxygen and a hydrogen. A hydrogen and a carbon bound to a chlorine. You can write the whole thing out if you want, but I mean, I've had enough practice to know that when I look at those, I'll be able to figure it out. So, what's the highest atomic weight? Oxygen. And I shouldn't even put the H in there, just the oxygen. So, that's got to be number one. The hydrogen will be number four. Which one has a higher atomic weight, iodine or chlorine? Because the carbons are going to cancel each other out, you gotta go to the next difference. So iodine has a higher atomic weight than chlorine, so that gets a number two. That gets a number three. So I have my system kind of looking like that. What do I need to do to get that into my kind of standard? So I'll flip my one and four. I need to flip my three and four. That was an even number of flips, which means this one is going to be our stereochemistry. one and I mean it's just the same thing over and over really um, and I'm not trying to say that like this is super easy but it's it's just the same thing each time so you just kind of have to find the pattern and just keep going with it so in that case you have a hydrogen a chlorine a CH3 and then a carbon with an oxygen on it and some other stuff so the chlorine will have the highest priority Hydrogen will have lowest priority. Those carbons, you have to go to the next thing. So the oxygen would be number two. The hydrogens would be number three. So do the same thing. Number four. One, three, and two. Okay. So in this case, all I have to do is flip my one and four. And I've hit my R standard. So one flip means odd number, meaning that's S. So the stereochemistry for that molecule then is SRS. Gosh, what is that cute? So I, I hope that makes sense. Um, that is also in the book, but it's later on in the book. It's in a different chapter than what we've been doing. So um, if you have more questions about that, you know, feel free to ask me. But um, all I ask is that if you have questions about that, you ask me specific questions because otherwise I don't really know what you guys are having trouble with. Like we've done a bunch of examples and so yeah, I just need more directed questions if you have problems still. And I will do my best to answer them. Got about 10 or 15 more minutes if you guys have more questions. And I have to go and prepare notes for my toxicology class in the morning. I already wrote your exam, though. I do need to proofread your exam still. Also, plug for tomorrow. You probably won't be interested because you guys are probably still going to be studying for an exam. But at 12.20 tomorrow, we have a job candidate coming who's interested in getting... Um, oh, you're welcome, Paola. Um, who, but we have a candidate coming tomorrow who's looking for a job 
to teach. I think she's an organic chemist, so she'd be teaching organic chemistry. So if you're interested in um, having a say in who the department hires, um, we do really appreciate student feedback. So um, feel free to come to the lecture. She won't be covering anything tomorrow in her talk that we will be having an exam on. So that wouldn't, I mean, that would make it ideally useful if it was all on stereochemistry, but I think she's talking about acids and bases and buffers. So just to, if you want to come and do that. And you get to fill out a little form and say, yes, I like this person and put a check marker. Yeah. Yes, I thought they were adequately able to explain difficult concepts. And we could hire someone, you guys don't have to put up with me at all anymore. Unless you want to. If you'll have me, I'll have you. check my email real quick to make sure nobody's trying to get in touch and ask me questions. If you didn't come in for the beginning of the video, I was telling you guys that I have just an unbelievable number of screens open to do this, so if you see me looking back and forth all over the screen, it's because I'm having to look at a bunch of the different screens I have open. Yeah, Bridget, that's fine. I've said that in class a couple times, so hopefully you guys heard me. You can come in with... Um, some molecules pre-made if you want. And then... Cis and trans options for 1,3-dimethylcyclopentane. Okay. Cyclopentane. 1,3. So, okay. That would be a cis form. That would be a cis form. That would be trans. And that would be trans also, two different forms. Okay. So, oh, good question, Marvin. If you have an amine and an alkene, how would you name it? Oh, on a cyclohexane. Not just a regular hexane. So, we can still do that. So, let's see. Cyclohexane. So an alkene. So, cyclohexene and an amine. Now, this is an example of one where I would have to tell you where to start numbering it, because otherwise you wouldn't know um, yet. We'll get there. That needs to be your first carbon, and you would name it this way if it's a cycloalkane or, well, rather a cycloalkene or just a regular chain alkene. It would be the same kind of thing. So what you have there is... Cyclohex two in, and then remember with an alkene, I'm sorry, with um, an amine, you take the E off the end of the name and put amine. So it would be in one amine. So cyclohex two in one amine. Let's kind of have a fun rhyme with it, right? And if it was an alcohol, it would be cyclohex 2 in one all Oh my gosh, my eye itches. 
Pardon. My computer is literally laying on top of Onyx's butt right now. She doesn't like it. You're welcome. I hope that made sense. Once you start combining the different lost my train of thought. Once you start combining the different um, suffixes at the end, like an alkene or an alkyne with an amine or an alcohol or a carboxylic acid or anything like that, it sounds a little weird. It's kind of awkwardly named, but it, it's the same exact methodology for all of them. So as long as you can like learn one of them, you should be fine. That's why I got itching so bad. It like has something in it. And I have dog hair in my mouth. My nose keeps itching. I'm having a hard time tonight. Alright, one more question. I gotta get off and work. I mean, other work. You guys are still work, technically. might be tapped out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hop off. Um, if you have questions, I have to go to bed early tonight. I'm not going to be up as late as I normally am because I have to meet the job candidate way earlier in the morning than I'm used to getting up. So um, I'll be up for probably another hour and a half able to answer questions. So if you need me, get in touch with me. If not, I will talk to you later. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Uh, bright and early at 1.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> I guess we're not too early, are we? So hit me up if you have questions, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.